I know, I know, I know. I, I know. Wonder, did I help in any way? I don't know. I don't think so. Hello? Hello? Testing? One, two, three? One, two, three. There, there. you go. That's it. God. And we're off. I'm rendered speechless. It's been a long time since we've had this as a problem. It used to be one of the uh, kind of hallmarks of Draw With Me. Dreadful technical problems. But I think uh, it was time I had my comeuppance. You can barely hear me now. Okay. Can you hear me well? Well, yes. Hello? JJ? How are things out there in hearing land? Uh, yeah. JJ, if you're hearing me, let me know. <laughs> All right, let me start again. I'm Danny Gregory. This is Draw With Me. It's it's Thursday. Uh, I'm no longer deaf-mute. Thank goodness for that. So... I've actually been uh, feeling pretty well these days. I hope you are too. It is uh, it is reasonably nice weather here in Phoenix. Slightly getting nicer every day. I hope that you haven't got um, too much weather you don't like. I mean, I was going to say I hope you don't have snow and cold, but a lot of people like that, so I hope maybe you do. But um, right now I don't. It's many years of living in New York living through winters. In fact, last year here in Phoenix, as of a couple days ago, it actually snowed for like five minutes and we had snow on the ground and then it went away. But um, yeah, so hopefully you uh, are enjoying your weather, whatever it is. We're off to a dull start <clears throat> with today's Draw With Me, as I can tell, because we had no sound and now I'm talking about the weather incessantly. But so that's, the way, that's the way it rolls sometimes. Um, this is who we're going to draw today, or who I'm going to draw today. You can draw whoever or whatever you'd like, but this is my OT, my original Teddy. This is the Teddy that I've had my entire life. It's one of the few things I have from my childhood, honestly. It's kind of miraculous that I still have this guy. I don't know. I don't know why I still have it. Um, he is, he's kind of lost his stuffing a bit. He has lost a fair amount of hair uh, and fur. Um, I think my sister had him for a while and my son had him for a while. And when I was looking at him today, <laughs> suddenly I hear whining. And I look down and there's Twiglet sitting next to me, looking up at me and looking at this, at this teddy and whining, and clearly she thought that she was next to inherit it, but no, she's not getting it. She's not getting my teddy. Ah, so, you saw a teddy in dirt yesterday. Not even sure what to make of that comment. Was it like a, a discarded teddy lying in the ground? Was it the shape of a teddy, as if it was like a you know when people see a Jesus in a tortilla? Was it that kind of a thing? Fascinating. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> well, uh, by the way, I didn't uh, even comment on those farms. So many good farms, right? So many, and so many interesting and different ways that people interpreted that thing. Um, it's just so I love, I love that. I love when people take it in all different directions and make it their own. So I'm hoping that you will do that today. You, We can draw my teddy if you want. You can draw somebody else's teddy. You can make up a teddy. You can draw Teddy Roosevelt. You could draw Teddy Pendergrass. You could draw, I don't know. I'm sure you can come up with something. Um, so let us, the wind blew it out of a box. Oh. So the teddy like, fell out of somebody's truck or something? I don't know. It's, it continues to be mysterious, this teddy incident. Today, I don't have anything to announce, particularly. 
Oh, I do have one thing to announce. I'm wrong. I do have one thing to announce, but I'll get to it in a second. It's minor. It's not minor. It actually could be really super, really major. But I'm not hawking any wares today. In fact, I may be done with that. I may be done with doing that altogether. Um, about how many things we'll be sketching today? I'll be sketching. I will be drawing. I don't really sketch, but I will be drawing one thing. You're welcome to draw lots. Originally, in fact, I was thinking of doing a whole bunch of different toys, but I couldn't think of a toy, a bunch of toys that everybody considers to be good toys that were interesting to draw. So therefore, um, I reduced it just to Ted. So Teddy, um, you know, I've had, I used, when my son was little, I used to draw his toys quite a lot. I've drawn Lego, I've drawn puppets, I've drawn Buzz Lightyear, I've drawn all kinds of things. If you have a kid, either living in your house or that you know, um, check out their toys. They're sort of interesting to draw. Some of them are. Sometimes they can feel a little um, too simple, in which case you might want to sort of draw not just the toy, but also that specific toy. Like what, like again, looking at my, at my Teddy, he has, you know, after all these hundreds of years, he's gotten his own particularities. And that's what can be interesting in drawing anything really, but in drawing a toy in particular. Um, if you're ever in, the, in New York and you go to the New York Public Library, they have the original Winnie the Pooh sitting in a glass box. And uh, looking, you know, you can see like where the fur is worn off. And this guy is probably really <laughs> dirty and dusty as well. You know, there's all kinds of individual things that happen. And that's, that's what's really interesting, I think, a lot of times is to, to just try and find that particular toy's history in its... Um, in its, you know, textures and, and deviations from the norm. Um, dog toys. I think I may have shown you this once. And I um, did this, been working on this series of uh, drawing Twiglets toys. Um, maybe, maybe that's what she was thinking that I was going to do. Oh, time to draw some more toys. So, yeah, I've been working on drawing those toys. She has a lot of toys. And um, we just washed all of them, and yet they immediately become f filthy and piebald. Um, so, yes, so let me just see if any of you have anything interesting you'd like to share. Um, Garrett is drawing Norse runes into 3D patterns. Sounds a little off topic, but interesting. Yeah. Um, so what else? So, all right, good. Well, a lot of you seem to be interested. And um, Chris mentions leaf blowers and rotary ra erasers. No leaf blowers today. <laughs> leaf blowing free day. Um, but yes, we had a great workshop last weekend uh, uh, on watercolor pencils with Kate Langley. I think that might have a bit of influence on me today because what I'm thinking is I want to spend some time drawing textures, getting into, you know, details of stuff, you know, cross hatching and fiddling, just getting fiddly, getting fiddly. I think over the last few times that we've met, we've drawn quickly and we've drawn lots of things and we've kind of scurried through them. So today, as you can tell by all this blathering, I'm in a more contemplative mood. So, all right. I've wasted enough time, and uh, we're going to get into it. The Purple Artist is new to us, and yet already has a moniker. So congratulations to that. You're welcome. Everybody who's here is, is, is an artist, including you, purple or otherwise. Uh, one Jay Diamond is going to be drawing an elephant. That's fantastic. 70-year-old elephant. That's about the lifespan of an elephant, isn't it? So get out some stuff. Get out your toys if you want to, but also get out your art supplies because let's, let's plan on you know, getting into it. Here's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be working on... Here's, let me get Ted out of the way here. I'm going to be using this. This is agave watercolor paper by Hanamula. Okay? So this is 
paper that's made from this plant, the agave. And it is, uh, you know, no cotton or anything else like that. It's, no, it has cotton. It, has, it is 30% uh, cotton, as you can see down here. 30% cotton and 70% agave fiber. So I think it's, you know, it's just better for the world to be using alternative fabrics. And it is a nice surface to work on. So here's what I want to say about this. This, here's a little one. Now this little one, I've been testing out some colors. I want to see, and I got out my, um, I have this, this set of um, Winsor Newton watercolor markers that I'm going to be playing with too. And um, so I, I decided that before, to, to try and be responsible. Before I started, I would test them out. So I tested out some different colors and I like them on this agave paper, so that's all good. Now I want to see if you would like this agave paper. So we're going to be giving, our friends at Hanumula are going to be giving us some uh, some samples to give you guys. So if you would like one, please let me know. Um, all you have to do is write to us. And this is the this is the email address. If you don't have it already, write it down now. Info at sketchbookschool.com and send us a, why you would like this. Tell us about why you'd like it, because we're going to randomly draw a bunch of names. But frankly, if you have a great reason why you would like some agave watercolor paper in particular, let us know. Um, send us your mailing address in that email, so we don't have to write back to you and say, what's your mailing address? If we don't have your mailing address, we can't mail you the, this agave watercolor. I can't send it to you as a download for obvious reasons. Uh, and we can only do this in the U.S. right now because we are sponsored by Hanamula, a German company, but they are here in the United States. And so we are providing agave watercolor. Ist eine naturais Papier mit einer matten, sehr homogeneen Oberflachen Struktur. We're going to be sending it out here in the United States. Sorry, sorry all you foreigners. We'll give you other stuff. You can always, you know, I, we give, I give you my, my, my very heart and soul every week, so that will have to suffice. All right, you got it? Ready to roll? And uh, let's see. So what I was thinking I would do is, uh, oh yes, JJ reminded me to tell you this. She, she's in charge of our shipping of these things. Uh, she doesn't write back to you, you just suddenly get a surprise. Yay, I won! I mean, honestly, isn't that nicer than getting an email that says you won and then you're sitting around waiting and wondering whether you won? Instead, you go to the mailbox and ching agave. So, all right, let's get on with it. Let's get on with this. And here's a picture. So I took this picture of Ted earlier, so you'd all be able to work from this picture, okay? And uh, let's see how this goes. I'm excited by this. I'm excited to see if you do choose to draw, to draw Ted, how that turns out. Cause uh, you know he's a handsome fellow, he's a handsome dude. So let's try it on. Um, now, so what I'm thinking is, I think I'm going to start with watercolor. You know, because because why not? So I'm going to get out my watercolor. Got fresh water for a change. Uh, I got my soup plate with watercolors. Now, I'm also going to double check another thing. Sorry, I'm reaching into my pile of reference material. And uh, yes, I have this, which is my reference book. And here it is. So I have this ye old reference chart, and it's an extremely advanced piece of technology. I line up this and this, and then I can see the colors. And so I'm thinking, let's rotate it. I'm thinking probably this color will be my base, and then maybe I'll add a little bit of this. So yeah, so now, because sometimes you look at these things and you go like, what is that color really? It looks kind of like, hmm, not sure. But now, thanks to the miracle of my color chart, I 
I can see the one thing I, about this color, and I forget what it is. It's my yellowish green color. Is uh, it's a little yellowish green. So Ted is Ted is a little pale. But uh, and I'm not. I'm going to use Ted as my inspiration, but I'm not necessarily going to try and capture, you know, kind of a exactness. So I'm just kind of building like a kind of a base of uh, stuff because I'm going to, I want to spend my time kind of working in textures. So um, that's really where I'm going to be putting my effort is into the textures. And uh, I'm trying to think if I've ever drawn him before. It's been a while though. He actually lives in the drawer by my bed. You know, for those occasions when you wake up in the middle of the night and you want your mommy and, uh, you know, you need something to accompany you as you suck your thumb. As, you know, as a man will, the situation a man will find himself in now and then. Um, so, yeah. I have him handy in the drawer. I can reach in and clutch him in the dark. Yes. As one will do. All right, so this is kind of roughly the shape. I think that's reasonable. Alright, so now I want you to help me to be my better self. Now, my normal self would be, hey, let me immediately start putting other layers on top of this. But my better self says, no, let's let it dry. Now, the problem with that is, of course, I've already wasted 22 minutes of your time. And we're not going to sit here for hours. Well, we could do, we could do this, I know. We could just sit here and listen. If you go down in the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go down in the woods today, you better go in disguise. For every bear that ever there was will gather there for certain because today's the day that teddy bears have their fear. <laughs> Instead, because we don't have a leaf blower, so we in the in the art business call a special effect. Yes. Okay. Ah, okay, so we're good. We're good. We're very good. We're very good, in fact. Um, I think he's nice and dry now. So now, I'm trying to think of where I want to start. I mean, I have, I have a bunch of things that I could be using. I could be using those markers, and I think I will. I think I'll start with those, and then, um, you know, let's have a look back at this chart. See, I'm kind of thinking this yellow ochre will be kind of right, and that's what this one is, yellow ochre. Yeah, so I'm going in with yellow ochre. Now, what this is going to allow me to do is to just get some, you know, to start in adding in some layers 
of stuff and uh, see where that goes. So I'm just sort of mucking around right now, putting in just just building up some tone, building up a bit of tone so that uh, old Ted is three dimensional. I'm not getting too heavy with this, you know. I'm not gonna get too too dark and heavy-handed because you can't back off from that. So. You know, as you know, with watercolors, it's good to to build up your build up your washes, build up your layers, and uh, you know, and then be, I'll show you in a second that this is this is a you know forgiving medium, a forgiving medium, good place to go for a fortune teller, telling. Um, so yeah, so How's yours coming along? Are you, you know, you, you, you certainly don't need to work in watercolor like I am. You don't need to build up these layers if you don't. If you want to just do a nice kind of textured drawing, you could do that. You know, why not? Why not just do it all in, in cross-hatching or do it, you know, do it. I don't know, there's a million ways we could draw him. And, uh. You decide what's best for you, how you're feeling today. I'm feeling in kind of a, you know, fuzzy sort of sense. And now, I think I want something a little darker, but I don't want to get too insane. So I think I'll just go to the burnt sienna. Yeah, see, it's a little heavy, this burnt sienna. Got to be careful. But see, I'm not really that worried about this, and I'll show you in a second, because we can blend it all in, and uh, it's not going to be a disaster. So I'm just going to sort of do it where the you know the bits are darker, not super dark, but just where his bits are. So that song, Teddy Bear's Picnic, people have different associations with it. Um, in some ways, it's sort of a creepy song. It has a dun 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 dun. dun, dun. It sounds sort of like macabre, like da, da, what's it called? Dance macabre. You know that song? Um, like with skeletons dance in the graveyard. So anyway, so what I'm doing now is I am I just wet my brush and see how I can go in and I can kind of blend these things, and suddenly that heavy burnt sienna isn't such a problem anymore. That's what a watercolor marker is all about. That's what it's all about. Anyway, so, um, yeah, that song, you know, if you were a kid in England like I was, that song was, apparently it was like, it was on the BBC all the time. They used it, apparently they used it to, like, test their audio, ironically, given what happened to me audio-wise today. Um... But I think in America it has maybe different connotations, different associations. It is, it was a song that was like a kind of a big band hit back in the early, early 1920s. And then somebody wrote lyrics for it in the 1930s. It's a strange song though. If you go into the woods today, you're in for a great surprise. It's lovely down in the woods today, but better not go alone. There's less a lot of, you know, creepy, creepy stuff for a kid to be confronting.
just thinking about that pig that I drew last week. You can draw with me. Really, really pleased with my pig. Do you ever do that? You just do a drawing. You're like, you know, I, I don't know why, but I just love that drawing. I did a drawing. There's certain kinds of drawings that I'll do every so often, very rarely, but every so often I'll go, oh, it's one of those kinds of drawings. It's one of those kinds of drawings that maybe reminds me of an artist that I really like. And I'll go, oh, my, I have no idea how I managed to channel that particular, you know, thing, but it just totally looks like an Ernest Shepherd drawing of a pig. Or uh, who's the art? Do you remember in um, E.B. White's, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, Stuart, not, not Stuart, um, Charles Webb. The drawings in that were really great, and I'm trying to remember who did them. I can't remember. It wasn't Ernest Shepherd, of course, but he did do Winnie the Pooh, and he did Winnie the Willows. But. All right, so Ted's looking uh, kind of more textured now, right? Textured and yet dimensional. Okay, now again, don't... F um, you didn't remind me to... Use the magic device because you see it is still wet. If you go down in the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go down in the woods today, you better go in disguise. For every bear that ever there was will gather there for certain because today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic. Yes, Garth Williams. Yes, thank you, Marilyn. Marilyn did it. She found out. Garth Williams, awesome. Good, yeah, Garth Williams. So, so yes, so there's Ted. Now is dry. And looking quite uh, fuzzy, don't you think? Looking quite nice and fuzzy. Uh, yes, that uh, that that's a recording from I think it's from the uh, Library of Congress. It's like an original seventy eight. That's hence it's uh, crackles. Beautiful. All right. What next? Um, I think it is time to haul out some other gear. How about this? So this is a fine liner, but it's brown. It's from Windsor Newton too, and I have an O1, and I also have a five. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I can start. You know, I, I could. Just focus on doing this kind of stuff and getting in there and doing that. Yeah, so we could spend all day doing this, as you can imagine. And that's the nice thing I like about this this uh, watercolor marker technique is you can you can really make progress quickly, right? Making progress quickly. In fact, I think that's Windsor Newton's uh, tagline. They have it carved on their building, flags flying by it, and sort of. Nice massive type. No, that's not their. That's not their. That's not their slogan. I hope it isn't. Oh, and look here. Let's put in a little stitch, stitch, and another stitch. Little little bear claws. Little tiny one there. So yeah, that's nice. I could also use the uh, other side of this. And then, you know, just blend it back in a bit. So, but I like this effect of these individual lines. Referring to the uh, hairs, furs. Um, 
let's see now. Okay, now this is the this is the big moment. Mm -hmm. Now this fine liner is waterproof. Better be. It's waterproof, so I can go back in if I want to and add some more watercolor on top of this without freaking out about it. Suddenly slathering and blurring his face. But what's nice is these aren't just lines, they are stitches. So you can kind of like try and imitate the stitchiness of them. How's that look? No, I think his nose is rounder. Ted, what do you think? Am I on camera? Yes, you're on camera. You know what? I've just realized this is you're really more your your stitching is more black, but it's okay. It's now brown. And let's see now, where do I place his eye? Because this could be nightmarish if I get this wrong. All right, that's reasonable. What do you think? Yeah, I probably should have put this one further over. Sorry, Ted. It's your face is flatter, and I've made you a little bit. I haven't quite captured. I'm sorry. 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 Okay, so. I'm going to do the iris in brown, and then I will go in and do your pupil in black. So here's a black marker, and uh, I want to make sure that I, that I get your highlight in there, but I'm sort of thinking that I'm going to add that highlight later with a white pen. Needs work. Needs work because this whole part of his face is really flat. So I need to start indicating where the, uh, you know, the dimensions in his face because it's really flat. I don't know if I can approximate. You see these parts of his fur, like this is completely worn off, like this is just the under stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I, I can do that. I mean, I, maybe I could, but I'm afraid if I get too into that, I'll just ruin everything. You ruin everything when you get too into it. It's true. Trying to develop this other voice, kind of like Jim Gaffigan. You know, Jim Gaffigan always. Has this other this voice that talks like that? Yeah, I'm starting to feel the need to have this internal dialogue, almost like the the monkey in my head has got a Jim Gaffigan voice. Oh my God, Jim Gaffigan's monkey! That's what that is, Jim Gaffigan's monkey. A new comedy special on Netflix. Cute. I, I'm, I'm feeling bad now because I feel like I didn't get his eyes quite in the right place. But who cares? There's something kind of 
interesting about him having these even smaller eyes, like he's sort of got some kind of, a, you know, something happened to him. At least he has two eyes. I have one other really old toy, which is a, uh, remember Lady and the Tramp? Well, it's a tramp doll that I got when I was really, really little. And uh, he's missing an eye. Maybe we'll draw him at some future point. All right, so how about some how about some pencils? All right, these are watercolor pencils. See how they go. I, I'm not. I think I've had some issues with putting them on top of markers for some reason. Yeah, they kind of are slippery a little bit. I'm not sure what's going on there. Yeah, they're like a little bit hard to do. I don't know. I don't know if that's this. What's going on there? They just feel like they're like they're kind of waxy. So I'm going to switch to the non-watercolor pencil. These are non-watercolor pencils. Let's see. That's better. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so that was something that was going on there. I'm not sure what, what that was. They weren't feeling quite good. So this non-watercolor pencil means it's not going to blend. I mean, it's not going to blend with water. Means I'm gonna have to blend it entirely through, you know, blending, blending the old-fashioned way. But it does allow me to really kind of. In some ways, I think I like this better than the pen. Yeah, I and mean, the pen was good for these sort of hard-edged uh, details of his face, but when it comes to this shadowing, I'm kind of liking the pencils better. It's really a back and forth business, this, you know, you have to keep going back and adjusting and tweaking and, and adding a bit more and layering some more stuff on it and doing all those kinds of things to really get yourself where you need to be. But once you go too dark, it's hard to it's hard to come back. So you've got to be careful with that part of it. Better to be too light and then have to come back again than to press down too hard and screw it up. Yeah, it's true. The Teddy Bear is a good model. He's holding really still. Well, it's a photograph of him, but but so is the real guy. Doesn't doesn't need a pee break. Doesn't mind being casually nude. Casually nude. The new special from Jim Gaffigan. <laughs> Sorry. That's not something we want to see. No offense, Jim. But that's not your appeal. Kids this these days still are aware of that of Teddy Bear's picnic. It's such a, a classic thing. I hope they are. I feel like in a lot of ways, like I forced my son to be exposed to all kinds of things just because I like them. I don't know that they were necessarily the things that everybody was into. Teddy 
Reaver's Picnic. Like Tintin. Mad for Tintin. But I don't know that every American kid was that into Tintin. Hello, where's my paintbrush? Teddy bears, though, I mean, teddy bears have, I mean, they've really, I think they've really, um, people have forced teddy bears into all kinds of unnatural situations where they're teddy bears, you know, that are astronauts and teddy bears that are 11 feet tall and they're teddy bears that look like celebrities and I don't know. Teddy bear's pretty basic, pretty simple. Pretty unbear-like, honestly. I don't know why we, why exactly have we encouraged children to, to feel like they should cuddle bears? I mean, bears for God's sake! <laughs> Hold on a second. Excuse me while I do this. Today you're sure of a big surprise. If you go down in the woods today, you better go in disguise. For every bear that ever there was will gather there for certain because today's the day that I do love this recording though. I mean I love it. I love the, the rolling R's. Gather I can't even do it. Um to get dark. My one regret here is, and if I, if I was going to work in gouache, I would have done things like, you see how there's the light fur encroaching on the dark? That's one of the problems with uh, on the dark, but I'm afraid if I try and do that with pencils, this is never going to work, and it'll just be ugly. So, yeah. Ted's looking pretty good. What do you think? I'm at that stage where I could really start to ruin it by going too far. I don't know if ruin it is the right term. I think it would just become something else. You, know, you can keep going with this sort of thing and keep layering and layering and getting more and more nice textures and stuff. I think I'm inspired a little bit today by that workshop this last weekend. Kate was just like, you could see how like doing it, going over and over and over this, you get more and more kind of interesting little unexpected details and stuff like that. So, yeah, we could keep going, but. That might be it. This is looking a bit blank, isn't it? Yeah, you see, this is now. I'm, now I'm starting to get into that point where it's like, oh, let me, let me mess this up. But oh, you know what? Do I do his like little Frankenstein stitches here? <laughs> All right, I'll leave you there. I'll leave. I'll leave you alone. Hmm, pretty good. Pretty good. Different color. He's much pinker, right? And flatter. 
my guy's kind of fuzzier. I like him better in some ways. <sighs> Good enough. Good enough for today. I mean, I, I got what I wanted out of this experience. Yeah, that was good. I deserve to drink some coffee. It's nice going deep like that, isn't it? Like, you know, going and layering and doing and more and meaning and twiddling and diddling. It's fun. It's doodly. It's also an opportunity to haul out art supplies. Let me now try this. Let me try my pastels. Let me get out my airbrush. Hey, I have a whole garage full of house paint. Let me throw that out. How about a bit of macrame? I know. Let's do some beading. Why not? It's fun. It is fun. Um, so good, yes. Where are we now? What were we going to talk about? Oh, yes. We're going to wrap things up a little bit. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. Keep working. Keep working. All right. What is this? Oh, yes. The Art for All podcast. So this podcast, I think we've done half a dozen or so episodes. So John Muir Laws, God of Nature Journaling. I'm lucky to be in the same room as him, even though I'm not actually ever in the same room as him. We do this, um, you know, via the inter internets. But Jack Laws has agreed to sit with me for an hour a week and we just jaw about various stuff. And uh, it's been... I've really enjoyed it. And in fact, he said to me this week, he said, you know, I was thinking, oh good, it's Monday, I get to do this again, which is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, I've always kind of yearned for uh, a perfect kind of jabber partner, and he is that. So, in fact, this last episode that we did, it went on for an hour and a half. An hour and a half, you're saying, what? Honestly, it could have gone on for longer. When you hear this episode we just recorded, which you will in a couple weeks, it was really intense, really, really good. So yes, so Art for, the Art for All podcast, it is, uh, it's here on, on um, YouTube, or if you're on Facebook, it's not on Facebook, it's on YouTube, but it's also a podcast, so you can get it wherever you get a podcast, you know? Um, so that's good. That is something that's fun. Uh, what else? I want to remind you again, if you'd like this Agave sketchbook, this is how you get it. Free. This is a premium item. We're just giving it away. Or Hanumula's giving it away. Thank you, Hanumula. Um, and, oh yeah, my essays. My essays have interesting... So every, every Friday, I write an essay and send it out, writing about various things. And... Uh, if you subscribe, you know that um, I have raised the bar a little bit for myself by now planning to write it twice a week, which has actually been fun. I mean, I'm really enjoying doing it twice. It's Yes, it's not a sketchbook. It's a pad. Thank you. Yes. It is not a sketchbook. It's a pad. They don't have Agave sketchbooks yet. I'm sure they will eventually. Anyway, so we hit this kind of interesting transition where I'm now doing it twice a week. And I've gotten a lot of response to that. I've learned <laughs> I've learned what people think of me. And I can't say I'm happy about that. No, I'm joking. I love hearing from people and it seems by and large people like getting it. So um, feel free to sign up. It's in fact feel free because it is free. Uh, results may vary. So uh, feel free to sign up for it at dannysessays.com. Yes, there's only one dannysessays.com, and I happen to have snagged it. So if you're DeVito and you want to write essays, you'll have to get a different URL. I happen to have snagged this particular one. So yes, I'm pretty pleased with that. Get out of here. Um, and then finally, what else did I want to ask you? Subscribe to this damn channel. Over 100,000 people have. It's kind of amazing, right? It's like a couple of stadiums worth of people liking these things. Oh, I also, speaking of, I have a nice 
video coming out tomorrow, which is about drawing that I, I think you'll, you might like. So if you subscribe to this channel on YouTube, you will know when it's going to happen. There's going to be like a premiere for it. But yeah, subscribing is good. If you subscribe, then you'll know when Draw With Me is. A lot of people are really confused by it. I've been doing it for a couple of years now. It's always at noon Eastern. It's always at 9 a.m. Pacific. It's always at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. No, that's not true. Because Mountain Time changes. I don't know. It's always here. It's always on Thursdays. It's always at the same time. But if you subscribe, you'll be reminded of that. Because there's confusion around it. It's confusing. It's difficult. It's challenging. Some of you seem to be happy with what I'm doing. That's good. Gisela likes it. Gisela, that's just not a good excuse. What do you guys think? Is being 83 a good reason to not... <laughs> whoa, whoa, sorry about that. To not respond to emails? No, that's rude. I'm joking. Write to me if you like. I'm glad to hear from you. I really am. It's so nice when people write to me. And... Um, Please do. This is great. Good. Well, I think we've managed to fill the time. More time than we probably should have. More time than necessary. But uh, I look forward to seeing your teddy bears. This is going to be fun for me. To have a cavalcade of teddy bears. A cavalcade of teddy bears. A cavalcade of teddy bears. Next week. Next Thursday. Next Thursday where we celebrate the Year of the Tiger. It's the year of the tiger. It's the da -na -na -na. yes, tiger, Chinese New Year. It's a water year too, apparently. So, yeah, that will be fun. So I'll see you next week. And um, share your share your bears, or if you are biz, share your frog. If you are um, whoever you are. Whatever you've done, share it by putting it on Instagram or by putting it on Facebook. Not by emailing it to us. Don't email it to us. No interest in that. We want you to put it on and share it out there in the world. <clears throat> and uh, then we will, we, will, we will share it. Donna Boomershine, 88. That's awesome. That's good. I hope when I'm 88 I can be sharing stuff on the internet if I'm here Ted will we be here on radiate find out will there be an internet in when I'm 88 will I have like arthritic claws that can't hold a pen and I can't draw a teddy bear let's hope not let's draw today not worry about that see you all next Thursday thank you so much for drawing with me today it's been a pleasure it's been fun and uh Ted will not be back. Sorry. No. Ted is done. He's done. He can go back in the drawer. He can chill out. Have a great weekend, Teddy. And the rest of you, too. See you.